G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we have a really exciting episode for you. We're going to be taking you through a fish room, a marine fish room that features some amazing fish and corals. Now, the last time I was here, the LPS really blew my mind and I can't wait to show you. So just behind this door, we've got uh, Zach and we'll go check out Minto's Marine. So for anyone that doesn't already know, uh, this is Zach from Minto's Marine. So thanks for having That's us, right, Zach. Mate. Um, it's a pleasure. We've got a, a lot of tanks behind us that yeah. uh, I, I can't wait to have a look at. Um, and so you've got a frag tank. Yep. And what's in this one? A uh, pair of hawkfish. pair of hawkfish. You've got the big display tank on the back and a small display tank over here. So there's a heap of tanks in here. Yep. Um, which one are we going to look at first? All right, shall we start with the frag tank? and? Yeah, the frag tank looks good. To come. So the frag tank is certainly, I think, one of the uh, most interesting tanks in that there are a huge number of frags and they're all really popping with color. Yep. And uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to see that the first one that, and I mentioned this before, the first one that comes to mind is, is this one down here. The Dendritica. The yep. Dendritica. Yep. Um, and that's one that we've had at, uh, at Gallery Aquatica a fair bit. Yeah. It's a nice, nice little coral. Um, I is, love the way it grows, and it, that one's from Gallery Aquatica too, isn't it? It is. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is. I had to say that, but it is interesting the way it's growing in this tank. It, it's really quite. Um, I don't know what the term is. S solid, robust. I think it's growing more like a Wayne Acro would grow, like very, a bit more solid. Yeah. And, the, and not as reachy as some other sort of bird's nest. In, in my display tank, it was quite uh, wispy, like thin sort of um, yeah. uh, part of like branches. But um, what else have we got in here? So it looks like you've got a number of uh, encrusting, Cyphastria. Cyphastria, Samacoras, um, Leptoceras, uh, Montipora. Um, I think this Samacora is one of my favorites. Uh, it's nice, yeah. the, the amount of polyp extension uh, it's got is, is really, really good. And that one come from a tank shutdown, so that was just a piece that was on a, a rock from a tank shutdown that I've just kept for... Oh, and you glued the whole rock onto the, onto the tile? That. And you can see, yeah, you can see where it's started and yep. it slowly moved down. There's a square plug in the middle there, so... Oh, interesting. Um, yep. And uh, these scollies are interesting. Yeah, where so did they come from? They're just from local fish shops that um, I just pick up the ones that don't look, you know, they're not sale worthy, I guess. Yep. They're, they're, they need some tender love and care. Um, and, and, and I trim and, them up and... And so, and, and bring them back. And try and bring them back, yes, that's the, that's the game plan. Effectively, these are salvage scollies. Salvage scollies, a bit like everything else I sort of have. <laughs> um, and what do you do to bring them back? Um, so I clean them up. So I, I trim them in the saw. Yeah. Um, and then check for mussels, that sort of thing. Boring mussels. Yeah, and get rid of all that dirty skeleton that's just... Uh, do, you, do you think it's fair to say that boring mussels is one of the most common causes of scollies going downhill? In, in all the ones I picked up, there's a little mussel in there. Oh, that's interesting. Whether it's, whether it's you know... So um, by removing as much of the skeleton as possible, yeah. you're minimizing the chance of, or you're maximizing the chance of removing the boring muscle. Basically, yeah. Okay, well that's... Um, and it just gives them that, that, that flesh can regrow yep. and it's not getting pestered by, um, you know, either hydroids or um, some sorts of algae and that, that, that pester it. Yep. Um, so shaving off as much of the, the skeleton yep. uh, tissue, okay. And giving as much chance to regrow that flesh over its skeleton, yeah, and, and become fluffy again. And yeah, cool. So uh, we've got the daisy polyps and GSP uh, over here. Yeah. Um, so I, I know in one of the tanks that we're going to see in a minute that you've got an amazing uh, colony of yeah. of that, which is really sort of over overtaking the back wall of the tank, which looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? These birds' nests are. Uh, 
Looking really nice. Yeah, they're my little colonies. So they're not in the big tanks or anything. They just live in there and I just trim them as they get a bit too big or as it as people want them. It's, it's, uh, I think give them it's, away basically. But give them away, geez. Yeah. Because I think they're one of the most underrated corals. Oh, know. they're hardy, they grow well. Um, they don't need a lot of light or we, care really. We, so. we sell a lot of uh, Shed Boy um, frags, uh, bird's nest that he does. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, I, I just think that more people should use them like that. And I've sort of been collecting the different ones. So the Paradise and then the yellows, the greens, the that, Dendriticas. That bird of Paradise is awesome. Yeah, really with the, so there's the a big one in base. there that I can show you as well, so. Okay, so nice to see uh, so many frags doing well and yeah. uh, especially to see scollies that have been um, salvaged. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at the next tank, which is a display tank, a Mini Reef 120. This way. All right. Wow. <laughs> this is very, very cool. So it's a Mini Reef 120. Obviously. Yep. Yep. Modifica modifications on it. Obviously, no stand, no chipboard stand. Yep. So you um, kept the tank, and is it the mini rift sump? Yep. Yeah. Still the sump. All the plumbing has been changed. Uh -huh. It, it's, it, it's interesting what you can really achieve out of a mini reef. You know, it's only 120 liters, but there's so yep. many corals in here, and no fish. No fish. Um, What's the reason behind that? Uh, the last little fish that I had died. Um, unfortunately, just a little pink streak grass, and he was in there just doing his thing, and that's. So the idea was just you know minimal fish or one or two you know cool things. Pest and control, and that was it. Yep. But once he sort of left, I was reluctant to put another fish in there just to see how it'd go and um, I, results. Yeah, well, I find it interesting because I oh, I like well, I typically think that you know you need a, a certain number of fish just to keep the nutrient balance in the tank. Um, however, um, this tank is clearly not suffering from, um, you know, deficiencies or anything. The corals are really thriving. Yep. Um, what are you feeding these corals? Um, so just the powdered food. Um, every now and then, I wouldn't say it's a daily occurrence. Um, and then a little bit of fish food just gets thrown in there every couple of days as well, just to make sure that things don't bottom out. Yep. Um, but apart from that, and the CVE, obviously, the so the CVE, uh, so uh, I should mention, we, we've also brought some uh, Coral Essentials uh, coral food for you to try in yep. this tank and um, uh, in the other tanks as well. So it'd be interesting to see what you think about that. But um, everything is pretty much the Coral Essentials range, isn't it? Yeah, so the, all the trace, um, all the ALK, MAG, calcium, um, CVE, aminos and grow. Yep. And I do the bio clean and I do the bacteria food as well. How often do you do those? Um, so every couple of days I do them yep. and then I do the rest pretty much every day. Yeah, I, I certainly see a, a lot of people that use a CVE that have amazing success and you can certainly see it in this tank. So talking about uh, the CVE Plus, so it hasn't been out for that long. Yep. Were you using the black labels before or? No, no I just went from the, the full range of traces and then moved into the next stage, which was going to be the black labels, yep. but then they bought the CVE out. So I just decided to go with the one bottle to save yeah, time. Yeah, of course. Uh, and Anya's trying it on her mini reef, uh, which is a, a softy sort of dominated. And yep. I, I was a little bit skeptical as to how much benefit she would see. Um, and we're going to do a video on that, so I won't give yeah. away the results. But how do you feel, you know, with the CVE Plus that it, do you uh, feel it's, you know, giving a tangible benefit to the I system. I think growth and colour. Yeah. I think both of them things at the same time. It, it did improve. Um, everything was fluffier and healthier basically from moving into it. I think it's. I, I don't know what it does. I'm not a. You know. But it, it, the I'm not overly sure either. And, and the colours started to pop more. And the, I you mean, know. your red scrolling Monty. We we see this in a lot of different tanks, and uh, certainly my display tank at the moment, it's not showing great colour. Yeah. Uh, and, and that could be for a variety of reasons. But but the, you know, the colour in here is sensational. Um, the I mean, obviously the Gonies are incredible, and there's, there's one special coral that we'll talk about in a sec. But uh, I just want to talk about this daisy polyp <laughs> and the green star mat. That is incredible and the color i think is probably largely the strain of the green star mat that you're using yeah. because it you know varies in color so much but 
but I love the way you've got the green stripes of the, the GSP through the daisy polyps. It just looks incredible and the color is amazing. I'd suggest if someone wants that look to, to get in and do it. Just just stick some to your back wall if, if you want I've that started... movement, if you want that, the bit of color up the back and it, it takes away from that dirty coralline back wall yeah, that I, I don't think would work in that tank. I have started doing it and I've just been using the GSP, but I'm gonna you know, copy this in that I'm gonna start putting, mixing in the daisy polyps with yeah. the GSP to have. You can even get a yellow type daisy polyp. I, I sh yeah, I mean, probably should try a few. It, yeah. it looks, looks really good. And, and I mean, these guys are really awesome. They're doing all right. Um, but the one coral that we really have to look at in this tank is, what's it called? The, the chalice. The chalice. Yes, yeah. Check yeah. out this, it is amazing. All right, so tell me the story about this one. It was on a, I'm guessing that was a plug just where that big eye is. So I pretty much bought the one mouth that's on the very top. Yep. As just the orange with the blue and a tiniest little bit of green on it um, from a local fish shop. Yep. Um, and I walked out of the shop without buying it and then I drove around the block and I walked back in the shop and bought it because That's... I thought, I can't let that go, I'm new and it's too good. Yeah. Um, and I've basically had it in position since, so nearly three years now, I'd say it's been growing. Uh, and, and obviously the orange around the growth is uh, just expanding out and it's just, um, it's really... And it just pops off the new little orange mouth. But then, interesting, down this side where the blue is, where the green originally was, yep. every mouth that develops on that line is popping out a green mouth. And it so looks like there's a little bit of green, like... That's the, the original little bit of green. Oh, so it's just it's, moved out. It's just moving, it's moving along. Um, it doesn't disappear, it just keeps staying yeah. on the edge there, so... Yeah. It's an interesting piece. No, that is, that is mega and cool. Yeah, my baby, I'd say, it's... The chalice. <laughs> so I want to have a look at the only fish only tank in uh, this fish room before we have a look at the big display tank. So uh, this is one of the most interesting tanks because it's probably the most unique tank I've seen in a while. So we've got two rocks with Calerpa and two fish in the tank, but they are cool fish. Yeah. And as I was saying, these are probably one of Rory's favorite uh, things in this fish room. Yep. Uh, what was the name of these hawkfish? They're Blakiri hawkfish. So they're, they're from Sri Lanka, yep. around that area of the ocean. So um, they come into a shop I was working at and I just started hand feeding them in the shop. And they basically sit in my hand and take pellets off my hand which is cool they're um, really tame and you, you yeah. can see the way that they're, they're just so perceptive of what's going on around them and yeah. um, they always want something out of you every time I walk down here they're like what are you doing what are, what are you up to can you feed me so so they really are a pet like they're, a pet. They're, and they're very aware <laughs> yeah. very aware yeah, yeah that's what I know about them so uh, do you think they're a male and a female they they've got to be yeah because um, they're yeah the way I they are would the way they act and they obviously get along very well it, it does sort of seem that way i don't know how that you, you sex hawk fish at all i don't know i think that's the best stop <laughs> i think that's the best way they live together so they they have their male and female and it's just uh, a, a four by 15 by 15 probably something like that yeah it's th it's four by 30. oh 30, okay so it's not even yeah and um, just uh, two uh, sponge filters. Two sponge filters and a wave maker and some water changes. That's all you need for fish and, and a bit of calerpa. So. It is a cool tank. All right, let's have a look at the display tank, the big one. So here we go. This is uh, one of the most amazing display tanks I've ever seen. It's a four foot by three foot. Uh, what are we gonna call it? Mixed reef tank? Mixed reef, I'd say, yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, the dimensions for me are one of the most, I think it's what really sort of makes this a unique tank because it allows for what is quite a unique uh, aquascape yep. um, in a really, really good way. It's, it's much more three dimensional than most aquascapes you see. Yeah, um, the plan, well, I found the tank for hundred dollars and I was like, let's do that. Let's go with the three viewing panels is the sort of I Which, wanted like a squished peninsula sort of thing. I sort of think I, about. I was that, just about to know? say peninsula because you know any tank that you are viewing from three yeah. sides really is a peninsula, but it's a peninsula which is uh, wider than it is long. I mean, really, that's the length, that's the width. Um, yeah. So and, and I tried to build it so there was three different. Looks like you're looking at three different reefs. I didn't want it to look 
like you could see much from the other angles and every angle you looked at looked like you were at a different part of a reef or looking into another tank even I, I, at yeah, some points. I, I think that's what I like about it the yep. most is, is that, you know, this is a great angle, but that's a great angle. And then, you know, when you're over there, yeah. it, it's another great angle, but they're all, they're all so different. Yeah. Um, and the color of the corals is so good. Like really, uh, these acro and I mean, the strawberry shortcake <laughs> front row center is, <laughs> uh, you know, so bright and the coral lights are just like, you know, they're, they're just glowing. It's in really good. What yeah. you said that one, what, a frag on a frag or something like that? Yeah. So the frag, it grew, the frag didn't grow, but as soon as it hit the rock, Yep. It just exploded into what it is now there. So, um, yeah, I'd, it seems to be doing better off the plug than yep. on the plug. Mm, interesting. Um, and there's the Robusta right there, which is particularly good. Actually, uh, that Monty, so there's a, yeah. that red Monty below it. We're looking at the red scroller in the other tank. Is that a different... I think that's more of an encrusting Monty. Um, For because for a long time, uh, like years ago, all we had available to us was the encrusting and yeah. plating uh, Red Monty. And then in recent times, the, the scroller has come around and, and now that's kind of everywhere and it's, it's almost harder to find the original yeah, red okay. encrusting. Um, but it's good to know that you've got it because uh, that's the sort of thing I love at Fraggle yeah, one it's, <laughs> It sort of fills in that area too. I was hoping it was scrolling when I got it. Well, that's, um, and I was going to scroll it out underneath the acro. And that's what people always wanted. Back yeah. in the day, before we had the red scroller easily available, people were always looking for it. And so they'd buy the encruster, which would occasionally plate out, yeah. um, hoping that it would scroll, and it never did. Um, but it, it is awesome the way it really sort of branches between yeah. what I think that's a different bombing to that one, is it? Must it's be. all sort of one connected. It's like an M. So, which is fitting, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you need two AMs, Minto, Marine. Yeah. Um, and basically, the, this big structure at the front, the, the big branches, that's yep. an old acro or an old piece of live rock yep. that was obviously an acro at some point. And I thought that would make that part of the scape look the best if I plant an acro on it. Um, really branches it out. And it saved me a lot of time. So. Mm. They're probably some of the biggest utter chaos polyps I've ever seen too. Yeah, and the <laughs> clowns are taking a liking to them again. Um, All right. And the elegance, they like to switch between them too. Yep. Yeah, no, it's cool. There's so much to look at. And the, um, the Montipora Digitata is actually, I saw it before, but uh, from this side here, that, that digi is really bright. That's a bubble gum, That's a bubble gum isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So the bubble gum is, is so bright and I, I love the, the way it's you know quite thick. I, I think sometimes when we have it growing in other tanks, it kind of grows a little bit thin and a bit more difficult, but uh, you have a KH keeper on this tank. Yes, yes. Let's check that out. All right, so yeah, that's the dragon, the KH keeper. Yep. Um, it, it doses, it does everything. So it tests and doses um, once every two hours. Yep. It tests and then it doses accordingly. And you've got your the reef factory just single yep. and that's uh being controlled by the the kh keeper because yep. i i can't help but feel that sometimes in some of the tanks where that digitata doesn't uh do as well as it is clearly here yep. that I, i've always put it down to kh instability so um that makes sense because i never i had never really done that well until Before I stabilise the, the tank more. Yeah. So I think it does love stability more than anything. We, we had a quick... The tank. Yeah, we had a quick look at the, the figures for uh, what the KH Keeper is putting out and they're all pretty close to 8, aren't they? Yeah, eight so about... The base is from 8 to 8.3, I'd say, yep. um, on a given day, so... Which isn't too bad. Mm. Yep, no, it, it certainly is an amazing tank. So we could certainly talk for a long time about the equipment and the, the way you run a lot of these systems. And yep. I mean, I, I see refugiums, we talked about the KH Keeper, um, you're on the Coral Essentials yep. um, with your supplements, but uh, let's just touch on the lighting. All right. <laughs> because this is uh, an incredible array of lights. And I just want to very quickly mention it. We've got uh, the T5 ATIs, we've got a Gen, did you say Gen 4 radio? Gen 4, yeah. Is that two. Yep. two Gen 4 radions? Yep. Kessels. Prime. Prime. 
XR15s. And two XR15s. Gen 5s, yeah. It's a, um, how do you get them all to sort of work together to be the one lighting system? So the, the, the Radeons are easy, obviously. Um, yep. You just set all them to the same spectrum. Same with the Prime now, you can get that pretty close because you're going to add that to Mobius. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So you can sort of. So fit, that's on Mobius. So you can fit it into your schedule a bit better. Okay. Um, and it gives you close to the same. I don't really see a, uh, like a dips in the light intensity or anything. Uh, it, though standing back, you know, it really looks like, yeah. you know, it's all just one light. The main system. focus was to get the most light. Originally, the Acro was only going to be in the center of the tank, and it dropped off to your LPS and and your. Um, your leathers and all that sort of stuff. But as that changed, I got more acro and I've put it over here and I've put bits out the back. So adding the Kessel and the Primes just sort of spotlight and to cover them shadows. Yep. Um, because I was getting some like rays of different light when you looked at the tank. Mm. Um, you could see them where they interconnect. And uh, they all purchased new? No. No, it's all second hand. Every every light is apart from the blue, the XR15 blue up the back. Yep. Everything's second hand. So I just get them, I clean them up. Um, it's easy to do. <laughs> it's you don't need to buy a new light every time you want to add light to your tank. I, I, I think, think fixing them up, you can get parts for the Radeon's pretty easy. Yeah, that's what I was um, gonna say. That's easy to do. It's a screwdriver and a bit of bit of mucking around if you if you put a computer together or pulled apart a computer or a car even yeah you should be able to put a new puck in or a new motherboard yes. at any point in time. so replacing parts um, not that hard but I think a lot of the time it's uh, even just as simple as some of them just need a good clean on good the inside clean. yeah a lot of them won't turn on if they're not even clean properly. yeah you know you give them a good clean let them sit and then they turn on um, yeah, Re Reefbeard often goes through the ones at the shop and uh, gives them a service and it's incredible, uh, even sitting this high, how much uh, dust and salt and whatever they can get in them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, servicing them and um, makes, me, makes me think I should clean up some of the old radions I've got <laughs> in the fish room. Well, them ones don't get cleaned as much as <laughs> I'd like to either, but um, at least I know if they do break, I can fix them and replace them quick yeah. and easy. So. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's interesting. They certainly are putting out an amazing light for the corals, and the colour of the corals really shows it. Yeah, so. thanks. So I think it's fair to say we've covered a lot of the corals in uh, these tanks, and, I mean, looking at this tank, you can see why the frags are so good, because you've got so uh, many beautiful mother colonies to take them from. Yeah. But let's talk about the fish. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what do you want? It, what do you well, want? what fish have you got in here? What are your favourites? All right, so there's... What are they in here for? <clears throat> um, there's four tangs. So the big hippo tang, the yep. dory, uh, dinky we call it. Cause dinky, they dinky, are dinky dory. They get under the rocks and they lie on their side and they kick shit around, but yep. um, they're a bit a bit dumb, but lovely fish. Yep. Um, and it's good, got good color for a, a blue tang of that size. Good color, yeah. You know, and he, he looks pretty friendly too. Definitely fed well. Um, and then I've got the yellow tang yep. um, up here. Uh, the powder blue, which is probably my favourite tang in there, would be the powder. Looking very healthy, he's, very he's a lovely fish. well conditioned. Um, yeah, and they don't really fight each other that much, um, which is good for the tangs. Oh, and you've got the Genocanthus. Yeah, so I got the Watanabe Angel, the female. Yep. I got her as a little baby um, by did, herself. Did so. you? Have, oh, you never had a male in there. Never had a male in there. Um, there's a the Melanaris Ras for a bit of pest control. Yep. Um, just a female at this stage, I think. I don't know if they change or not. Melanaris. I think they do. Yeah. Um, stripey. Big Stripey, who, as every probably, everybody probably knows, they don't eat Aptasia when they're that, <laughs> that age, but. <laughs> they're great when the size of a 50 cent coin. Yeah, again, um, he's, he's a pet, so it's hard to get rid of him. Um, he has been in there since he was little. Uh, we've got my first two marine fish, the black and white clowns. Oh really? Your yeah, first two? Yeah. What year did you buy those? Um, so three years ago when I bought the mini reef. Oh, right. uh, yeah, it come with the mini reef. So again, that was another tank that was a second hand pickup to yep. start the hobby. So Because I think a lot of people don't realise how long clowns can live for. Oh. And you know, you can get 20, 25, maybe they've been 30 through years out everything. of a pair of clowns. Yeah, they've been through all my F ups and ups and downs and yeah, they've been quarantined and caught things and been quarantined again and um, but no, that I love them. Uh, I don't well, it's the same. Them, so. I've got uh, black and white clowns in my display tank too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I, I think that. 
I like them better than orange clowns. I'll just put that out there. And any <laughs> any any of the fancy clowns, they can. I'll take a pair of black and white ones. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. yeah. I think they just contrast way better and yeah, they're no, a bit they're, more unique. They're, they're good. Oh, and Dotty, I mean, a uh, royal grandma. There's a royal grandma. There's two chromus um, floating around, probably in between the rocks yep. as they do now. Which I've found as the acros grow and them chromus have been going through and sitting in between the acro colonies. So it's fun to see them sort of scan through there and hide. I have to um, ask, going back to coral, how did you get that red Monty on the back of your tank? Oh, that, it was a plug there. Oh, okay. But then, yeah, it's just, it was Because I can bit see like, there's plugs over there or, you know, like bits yeah. that you've, you're stuck onto it. But uh, yeah, the red Monty on the back is pretty cool. Yep. Um, what other fish? There's a Tamini tang in there. You never see him. Yeah, He's always... I, I freaked him out, I think. Um, and there's a Decora goby in there somewhere. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, he, he lives down, down in behind the Zoas, just he yeah. hides. And Douglas, where's Douglas? Here he is. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's uh, my Dougie. girlfriend named him Douglas, so that's his name. Lord uh, Mole Blenny. <laughs> He's always fat and happy at the front, so. So you've got a display tank with quite a few fish. Yep. You've got the mini reef with no fish. No fish. You've got the hawkfish tank with two fish. Yeah. Yep. And what fish are in the frag tank? Well, they're all marine fish, but Let's in the look. frag tank. And people may hate it, they may <laughs> like it, but um, I've got three mollies, so two uh, Dalmatian type ones. Yep. And then the gold one up here. So tell me why they're in here. Um, they're in there because the tank's too small for a tang. Yep. And I've already got a lawnmower blenny, so I didn't want another one. I didn't so, want any blennies. So, so, so wait, wait, wait. So the answer is they're in here for algae control? Algae control. And you think they're good? They're great, yeah. I think they're very delicate. They get in between the frags. They yeah. Get, they can get into every corner of the tank. They're, they are delicate with the way they kind of... And I've seen them eat and they eat ferociously. When the wave makers get a bit of algae on them and yep. you turn them off, they're right in there, heads right in there, chewing all the algae off. And they clean them up pretty quick too. So. I, I remember the first time someone told me that they were using mollies for... Uh, you know, her uh, cleanup crew and herbivores yeah. in their tank. I, I, I in salt tank, I couldn't believe it, but uh, yeah, yeah from well, everything the, I hear, they do the, a great job. The late Jake Adams, who put me on to putting mollies into yeah. uh, tanks, and I thought, well, I'll go get some, and I put them in the frag tank, and yeah, yeah. Um, they've done well ever since. I started with four, but I think the fourth one was a female, and they're all males, so sh you should not put one female with three males. She died from affection. Yeah. Um, so just the males, I'd just suggest get males and no point breeding the fish just to get eaten or go through a wave maker or whatever. It's, yep. Yeah. Um, Very nice. So we could certainly talk for hours about uh, the different um, equipment and things that you're running on this system. Yep. And um, I heard that you are going to be moving. Yes, big stressful move. So this. obviously I've got to move all of that into another shed <laughs> you know it, it's yeah. hard enough just moving a single tank but that's to uh, have to move a whole fish room it's uh yeah that's pretty it's a task on. it's going to be stressful but so. um that's what i love about the hobby it's always stressful and it always keeps you on your toes oh so. and such a shame <laughs> i'm busy that week too <laughs> you'll be here mate okay we'll see i'll do it for frags <laughs> yeah but um, anyway, thanks so much for letting no us have a look through. Um, yep. And when you are set up at the, the new place, we'll have to come out and check it out and uh, so much more we can discuss. So. Yeah, do another whole video. Thank you. No worries. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. See you again. We'll Thank see you. you at the, the next fish room. Too easy. <laughs> see you guys. See ya. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Poker TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing! <laughs>